Hey guys, it is Ryan. I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I'm a bit of a fun fanatic when I can. I like to work, but I like fun too. It's a thing. And now the truth is out there. I can tell you about my favorite place to have fun. Chumba Casino. They have hundreds of social casino style games to choose from with new games released each week. You can play for free anytime, anywhere And each day brings a new chance to collect daily bonuses. So join me in the fun. Sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. Hello there. It's Eric Erickson here. I hope you're doing well. The phone number 877-973-7425. Should you wish to be on this here program, I've got to play you some audio. I got to find it all of a sudden. I had it and then I closed the window and now I got to get it back. This is a campaign commercial that Barack Obama ran against Hillary Clinton uh, in uh, 2016 in the Democratic primary. This, listen to this. More low road attacks from Hillary Clinton. Now she's pushing a bogus gas tax gimmick. Even Governor Easley called such plans a subsidy for oil companies. They'll simply raise prices and pocket the difference. Clinton aides admit it won't do much for you, but would help her politically. So here's the choice. Clinton gimmicks that help big oil or Barack Obama. A real energy plan and a thousand dollar middle class tax cut to help families truly pay the bills. I'm Barack Obama and I approve this message. That was Barack Obama. Uh, that was run in North Carolina in the Democratic primary there. The North Carolina primary was what pushed Barack Obama over the line, if I remember right, um, in 2000, not 2016, I said 2008 in the Democratic primary. In 2008, Barack Obama attacking Hillary Clinton for proposing a gas tax holiday. Now, here is Alston Goldsby, one of Barack Obama's uh, chief economic advisors during his time in the White House. Yeah, I think the, the, the money that would go to the uh, Federal Highway Trust Fund, they, they would just have to borrow it. I think the bigger problem that people should think about is in an environment where the supply is constrained, When you get rid of the tax, if you got rid of the tax, it might very well be that the refineries simply raise the price and and they say, hey, thank you very much. You you basically, rather than cutting the tax and getting it passed through to the consumers, did a thing that got passed through to the refineries. So the consumer's actual benefit might be even smaller than what it what it first looks like. In other words, uh, multiple Obama economic advisors say that a gas tax holiday won't actually help the American people. On top of that, Jerome Powell has testified before the United States Senate and is also debunking the idea that it is uh, Vladimir Putin to blame for inflation. Given how inflation has escalated over the past 18 months, would you say that the war in Ukraine is the primary driver of inflation in America? No, inflation was high before, certainly before the uh, war in Ukraine broke out. Given how inflation has escalated over the past 18 months, would you say that the war in Ukraine is the primary driver of inflation in America? No, inflation was high before, certainly before the uh, war in Ukraine broke out. Not good. Not good. Um, So Joe Biden wants the gas tax holiday regardless. There a lot of states have implemented gas tax holidays at the state level. Gas tax holidays at the state level operate differently from a gas tax holiday at the federal level, uh, in part because not every state does them and every state has a different gas tax rate. And so when those gas taxes come down, it actually does uh, visibly reduce impact uh, on the total um, bill that you pay at the pump. 
Georgia, where I am, because of its current gas tax holiday from the governor of the state, uh, has a uh, lower average than most states in the country. California is raising its gas tax. It's giving no gas tax holiday. It wants to raise its rate. Uh, California gas, on average now, is above $7 a gallon, which is absurd. At the federal level, though, if you get rid of the gas tax nationwide, what probably is going to happen is it stimulates more demand. By making gas cheaper, people who have scaled back their trips might not now scale back their trips. So they go buy more gas, which makes more gas scarce, which drives up prices. This, by the way, was Barack Obama's argument in 2008, and it's the argument of Barack Obama, or of Joe Biden's own economic advisors until uh, like five minutes ago. You get rid of the gas tax holiday, you thereby make gas cheaper for consumers, you thereby stimulate demand, you thereby cause gas prices to go up to regulate the demand because the issue with gas at this point is supply. You know, in basic economics, you learn in high school and college, there's a supply and a demand curve. As supply goes down, the price of supply, uh, the, the cost goes up. As demand goes up, it reduces supply. It causes prices to rise. Scarcity. The price and the free market on the supply-demand curve, it's going to find a point of equilibrium where supply equals demand. And the Biden administration seems to have forgotten the basics of economics on the supply-demand curve. The Biden administration now uh, is delaying oil and gas lease sales because of environmental protests. This is from Fox News. The Biden administration delayed multiple oil and gas lease sales a second time late last week amid an ongoing protest from environmental groups. The Bureau of Land Management, the agency tasked with overseeing oil and gas development on public lands, announced Friday the dates for three lease sales slated for New Mexico, Colorado, and Wyoming would take place at the end of the month. The three sales had already been rescheduled once before. The date for the sale was shifted slightly to complete the analysis required under the National Environmental Policy Act and allow time for protest resolution. In addition, a separate oil and gas lease sale in Nevada scheduled for June 14th was delayed two weeks. Two others set for June 28th haven't been pushed back yet. Uh, There are protests from environmental groups. They don't want more drilling. The Biden administration is accommodating them. They don't have to, but they're accommodating them. And now they want the gas tax holiday, which will stimulate demand without increasing supply. And part of the supply issue, you should know, is because of refineries. Many of these refineries uh, need upgrades to comply with environmental regulations put in place at the beginning of the Biden administration. And it's not worth them doing the upgrades, so they've scaled back production. Not a good look for the Biden administration, and yet they're blaming Vladimir Putin, Biden wants Congress to do a three-month gas tax holiday. Uh, One other notable thing, you know who's chiefly opposed to it in the House of Representatives? You may have heard of this lady, Nancy Pelosi. She thinks it's a gimmick that won't work. Nonetheless, here's one of Joe Biden's economic advisors. You've had a long history with different administrations. You remember President Obama that didn't didn't was not a fan of, of this move. I don't know if you remember that great quote. He said it's a gimmick, and I don't think people need to get a free uh, a free half gallon of gas is not going to solve what, what we're trying to do. Did you agree with him back then? And have you changed your view, or or is it different this time around? Look, this is a different economic situation right now. We are coming out of a global pandemic, or at least we hope we're coming out of it. We have Russia's war on Ukraine. Uh, There's a lot of uncertainty. We have record inflation. And so this president, while very proud of the growth and in our economy last year and the strength of our labor market, also very much understands the cost of inflation for American families. Uh, We know that a lot of the inflation has been caused over the last several months by Putin's invasion of Ukraine because that has generated increases in our energy prices. And so President Biden is looking at all tools available 
to try to help it make it a little bit easier for people at the pump. It's why he has uh, done historic releases from our strategic petroleum reserve, has relaxed some regulations on biofuels, and he's looking at other uh, options on the table as well, including a gas tax holiday. The gas tax holiday. Uh, most analysts, by the way, Democrat and Republican, most economists believe it would actually make the situation worse than it is. What Joe Biden is actually doing with the gas tax holiday is passing the buck to Congress so they can be the bad guy. This isn't going to help the Democrats in Congress at all. I think Republicans, if they have to consider the gas tax legislation, would be very smart to add a bunch of other tax proposals as well to it. In fact, uh, it was Robert Novak, the uh, late columnist, who said God put Republicans on the planet to cut taxes. Republicans should begin aggressively amending it in the House and the Senate to add other tax cuts and tax breaks for the American people if this comes to Congress. But Joe Biden has no other option because he is so unpopular right now. If Joe Biden does the gas tax holiday and it blows up in his face, as every economist left, right, and center says it will, uh, Joe Biden's going to be even more unpopular and look highly incompetent and ineffective. So instead, he's got to ask Congress to pass the gas tax holiday so they take the blame, in addition to the fact that it's dubious whether or not Joe Biden constitutionally could do it unilaterally. He wants buy-in from Congress. But, man, if the Democrats in Congress do this and the Republicans sit on their hands and don't help, much like with the um, COVID relief plan that caused inflation, when this causes a spike in gas prices and doesn't actually fix the problem, Republicans can yet again say, I told you so. Uh, Democrats don't want to fix the underlying problem of not enough supply. To do that, they would have to get rid of environmental regulations so that oil and gas companies are able to cost-effectively upgrade refineries and open refineries. Uh, and increased drilling, and they would have to get rid of all of the um, uh, protest delays on leases on land, on federal land. They don't want to do any of that because they don't really want to stimulate supply of oil and gas in this country. Uh, what they want to do is keep prices high and hope you get a battery-powered car, but you don't have the money right now for a battery-powered car, so you're stuck with the prices. The economy's stuck with inflation. Joe Biden's stuck with low approval numbers and the inability to actually fix the problem because the Democrats are too committed to the green agenda to actually help the American people. No, no, don't just take my word for it. Here's Jennifer Granholm, the Energy Secretary. We've got, obviously, all of this upheaval. We've got the coming out of the pandemic. We've got uh, this obvious invasion of Ukraine on the energy side. And we've got the moment to think and act strategically about lifting up communities and building these supply chains out and building out the installations in a way that give everyone a chance to succeed. Uh huh. They don't want you to fill up your car with gas and they don't want gas prices to go down and they don't want to do the things they could to lower gas prices and increase exploration. They want you to take the bus, the subway, or buy a battery-powered car. That's what they want. And every time Jennifer Granholm opens her mouth, she more and more openly suggests that's what they want. But you don't have the money to go out and buy a battery-powered car tomorrow. And even if you did, you have no place to plug it up. And if we all did it, and we all could, we wouldn't have the power grid to sustain them all. They don't add up the, the policies they want. They don't work. They, they're not going to improve the situation. Well, what would improve the situation is getting rid of the environmental regulations they put in place at the beginning of the Biden administration so that uh, companies could upgrade their refineries and get them back open and get them up to full capacity and reopen Alaska's Arctic National Wildlife Refuge to increase energy production, get the Keystone XL pipeline back in place to increase supply into this country. They could do all of those things. They could do all of those things tomorrow, by the way, literally in the next 24 hours, they could do all of those things and we would see immediate reductions in price. Why? Because oil is priced in a futures market, but they won't do any of those things. 
because they really actually don't want to help get gas prices back down. The more you understand that, the more you understand what seems like incompetence is actually willful maliciousness towards your pocketbook. I'm a longtime customer of Bowl & Branch. I love their sheets. I sleep very comfortably, very coolly underneath them. I don't like to get hot when I sleep. They're very, very breathable. They're very, very soft, and they get softer with every wash as well. Bowl & Branch sheets, they're not just buttery, breathably, and possibly comfortable and softer with every wash. You don't even have to worry about the thread count there because they use the best threads possible, and you can tell by the quality of the sheets. I highly recommend you get some. My wife and I, you know, she heard the ads on other shows. She doesn't listen to my podcast, and she wanted them, and then we got some, and we've fallen in love with them. We've got them on a lot of the beds in our house. They use the highest quality threads on earth for superior softness and a better night's sleep. They're so luxurious. They're beloved by three American presidents, and they got over 10,000 reviews, all of which are fantastic reviews. And right now, you can get 15% off your first set of sheets when you use the promo code ERIC, E-R-I-C-K, at BolandBranch.com. That's BolandBranch. B-O-L-L-A-N-D branch.com. The promo code is Eric, E-R-I-C-K. Hi there. It is Eric Erickson here. The phone number 877-973-7425. I want to go to the phones. David, I'm going to go to you next. Welcome. How are you, sir? Always a pleasure. Thank um, you. One thing I was listening to your thing about the gun, gun laws that they change everything. The one thing I mentioned to your screener was this. 18-year-olds back in our day are a lot less ma more mature then than they are now. That's one thing I would be agree with. That's true. The 18 to the 21. I mean, I, it wouldn't even bother me to go up even higher than that, to be honest, maybe 23. But just because of that factor, same principle with the, you know, why is uh, cheaper, insurance cheaper for, for girls than it is guys when they're that age because women are more mature. You know, that's a fact. But anyway, mm -hmm. I just want to enlighten you with that and just throw that at you and have a great day. Yeah, you too. Thanks very much. Yeah, maturity. Maturity is a big issue there. Uh, you, you certainly see it if you're a parent. My goodness. Uh, let's go back to the phone. Susan, you're going to be up next. Welcome. Hi. Thanks for taking my call. I drive a Honda Civic that has a, about a 10-gallon tank, just over a 10-gallon tank for gas. So if I get this big whopping reduction from President Biden, I'll get about, <laughs> I'll save about a dollar eighty, so I can buy 1.8 items off the dollar menu at McDonald's. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's so insulting. It's just like, how stupid do they think people are? Uh, very. The, 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 I mean, the, they, very. The, I mean, people elected him. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, God got that one there. So I, but it's just, it, it's just really sort of insulting, and I'm not generally a person that's going to be insulted very often because I have a thick skin. But, um, yeah, I mean, and I'm just, I'm single. I mean, someone for a person who's got a family to feed, um, that's going to, that's just not even going to, I mean, it's not right. even going to buy them a quart of milk. It, it, it will have no impact whatsoever other than potentially stimulate some demand from people who think gas prices are going to go down, and that's just going to raise gas what? prices up again. Yeah. Um, as soon as I can let you go there, but uh, thank you for the call. You're right. It, it It is. People should be insulted by this. The issue is the supply side right now. There are ways to improve the supply side, and this administration has chosen – in all circumstances, given all opportunities to not do anything on that, because the truth of the matter is they don't really want to help on the supply side. They want you to get out of gas-powered vehicles, even if you can't, um, and they'll raise your prices to discourage your use of gas. There are a lot of options out there. If you're a self-starter and you want to invest on your own, it can be really confusing and I'm delighted to tell you about SoFi because that's who I use. And now I've got them as an advertiser. 
If you're a SoFi user, uh, my gosh, you get all sorts of options, great research. You get the ability to invest in stocks, EFTs, crypto, plan out your retirement. Uh, more importantly, you got people you can call on. I mean, for example, um, I can use SoFi to buy stocks and EFTs and do the deep dive research if I need to and get complimentary financial planners ready to help answer questions. Uh, you can too, whether you're stuck on where to start or need help deciding what to do next. You can even save for retirement with traditional Roth and SEP IRAs. They have so many options. If you're into crypto, you can also explore crypto. They've got 30 available coins, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, Solana, Dogecoin, and so much more. But more importantly, they've got the number one ranked automated investment tool, their robo-advisor. It takes the stress out of building and managing a diversified portfolio without having to pay a bunch of experts to do it. I really like SoFi. Y'all, I've tried, you name it, and I probably tried it. And I settled on SoFi and think you will like it as well. Cut through the jargon, make investing easier with SoFi. Visit SoFi.com slash Eric to learn how you can win up to $1,000 in stock when you open an account. That's SOFI.com slash Eric. Brokerage and active investing products offered through SoFi Securities LLC. Member FINRA. Recipic. As a matter of fact, you can do that, and I'm going to go to the phones. I'm going to go to Lewis right now. Welcome to the program. Hey, Eric. Uh, you were talking about that fuel tax. Um, I'm a truck driver. We have what they call the IFTA, International Fuel Tax. And when we get fuel, uh, if we get fuel in the state where the taxable gallons are higher, uh, it puts a credit to the other states. So if we ever buy in a state that has a higher tax, which like where they encourage us to buy it in Pennsylvania, Illinois, California, California being the highest, 79 cents per taxable gallon, then you get a credit to other states, and actually you come out better. It's that's hard to realize, but you come out better by overbuying because it distributes to the lower ones. Uh, George is about 31 cents per taxable gallons. And so what we have to do is you got to figure out how many miles you run through that state, and then you divide that uh, however your truck is getting per gallon. So let's say it's 256 miles to the state of Georgia. Then you divide uh, 6.7 miles per what your truck's getting, and that's how much fuel you would get per state. Um, for us, uh, you know, talk about the surcharge right now, na nationwide, across the board, we're getting 76 cents per mile extra on the surcharge. That's what the trucking company companies are getting to run these loads. And uh, it would not do any good to have a tax holiday because we'd end up having to repay that back somewhere down the road. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that, that I don't okay. See, I don't see the positive. So, so, uh, Lewis, um, if, first of all, I'm appalled to learn that there is math in truck driving. I can't get into this career after all, uh, when radio <laughs> doesn't work out. I, I, I'm, I went to law school to avoid math and, and now you're telling me I'd have to figure all this stuff out. Secondly, I had no idea that that's the way I, I literally, you were the very first person I've ever heard this from about, uh, buying in, in States with, with the high tax and how it's, that's just, that it seems like a remarkably complex system, uh, that just adds right to the bureaucratic now. load. Sometimes, sometimes when we run in states, like we go to California, before it go, before we get the surcharge up there to run the loads, sometimes it's just better to run the load in California, come out of there, and then just let it, let them take the tax at the end of the quarter, end of the month. It come out cheaper that way instead of having to chase down the fuel, because you'd have to chase down fuel per state to get what you would need to be able to make a profit on the load. That's how that's how these trucks. I'm an owner operator, so that's why I will tell you this. Good grief! Uh, wow. Uh, okay, so you know, while I got you on the phone, um, you, you didn't ask for, sign up for this, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Can you talk for a moment? Because I got a buddy of mine. He's my next door neighbor. He does transportation law at, at my alma mater, 
And he was talking about one of the things people don't understand is all of the regulations in California on trucks limit the number, the types of trucks that can drive in California now, which limits the availability of trucks to go to the ports, which causes part of the supply chain problem because y'all are just so overregulated at this point. Right. Now, that regulation he's referring to is basically an emissions deal, which we have what they call a uh, DEF fuel, which is diesel exhaust fluid. And all that is, all that is, Eric, is pig urine. That's all that is. It's urethra. And it's to spray a mist in the exhaust, and the exhaust has to be heated up to 3,000 degrees. There's a burner that goes along with this. And that's all that is. And uh, there are trucks that run in there, but it's not hammered down every day like you would think it is. The regulation's there, but there's so much freight goes in and out of California, it's hardly ever caught unless they're just really in there slamming you with inspections. That's the only time that you would have that crunch. Other than that, they're, they're really not uh, trying to put that into effect because there's oh, so many different most freight that goes in and out of there. Wow, that interesting. You know, I, th- this is this is helpful, and also just shows how complex the system can be. Lewis, thank you very much for calling in. Really appreciate you spending some extra time with me talking about all that as well. I just, you know, it's it, we got all of these problems, and and so many people want to blame one thing. It's one thing I'm learning more and more. The longer I go on, the older I get. Everybody wants a simple. A, a simple explanation for stuff, and oftentimes it's it's a bunch of different explanations uh, all piled in together. Uh, believe it or not, it was uh, Paul Krugman yesterday. Yes, that's Paul Krugman. You know, the man's a Nobel Prize winning economist, and when he writes about the economy, even when you kind of disagree with him, sometimes you can learn stuff from him. But he actually reminded me in a column yesterday, he was explaining uh, some of the aspects of inflation and why uh, people are, are blaming some of the wrong things. And he actually, it's even the, the conservative economists out there are saying he's actually right on the money on this particular thing. People are looking at uh, one side of the coin and, and they need to flip it over and look at the rest, rest of it to get the full picture. But he was pointing out, uh, there's a quote, and I forget the economist now, but said a lot of people come up with... Um, a, a solution to a complex problem, and the solution is very simple and very wrong. And part of our problem we have right now is there are multifaceted aspects to the problems we have, from shipping and supplies with regulations and limitations on trucks that can be in California. They have to be newer model trucks. They don't let older model trucks in. You gotta. We've had multiple people call in and complain about the urethra stuff that they. You got to put in diesel engines now. Uh, and the cost and the burden that that goes up and having to deal with it and find it and, and put it in and handle it. Uh, the drive times for truckers in the country right now, the backups at the ports, the time you have to sit and wait to get the cargo, which then throws out your time that you can drive, the costs, the prices. We got huge problems. Where is Pete Boot Edge Edge? You would think that a secretary of transportation could deal with the bottlenecks and override some state level regulations with federal competing regulations and in some of the stuff, but they have no intention of doing that. I really do think so much of what we're dealing with right now is them trying to force change. I just don't think it's a conspiracy at this point. I don't think it's crazy to say. I think there is a lot of merit to the argument that the Biden administration is trying to not let a crisis go to waste in order to force Americans to change their behaviors. Because the Biden administration and the prevailing wisdom of the environmental movement in the country that has captured the Democratic Party is that we are a wasteful people whose behaviors need to change in order to save the planet. From driving to what we eat, to how we shop, to where we shop, all of those things are things that have to be changed in order to save the planet, according to the left. 
So they have no incentive to lower gas prices because if they lower gas prices, you won't get out of your car into public transportation or a battery powered car. They have no incentive to deal with the supply chain crisis because if they dealt with the supply chain crisis, you would not curb, shop local, look for stuff more locally sourced, even if it's more expensive. They have no intention of solving uh, the problems related to the food shortages and crises and price increases in this country because if they did, the cheap abundance of food would be wasteful and bad for the environment. They have no incentive to fix any of these problems because if they fix these problems, you would not have to curb and alter your behavior. And the environmentalists in this country have demanded that you do that in order to heal the planet. I firmly believe at this point that so much of the intransigence of the Democrats in trying to troubleshoot these problems and improve these situations is because they don't want to fix them. They want you to suffer, and in that suffering, figure out a path out of your suffering that requires you to change your behaviors to get you beyond where we are as a society in order to better save the planet. It's sad, but I think it's true at this point. I don't think it's deniable at this point. Rahm Emanuel, when Barack Obama was president, said never let a crisis go to waste. To some degree, the Democrats have now invented crises and exploited other crises in order to curb and change your behaviors. Uh, And it comes at a time that the media incessantly on a daily basis does drum beating for now you got to eat bugs, now you got to eat the synthetic plant-based meats. I was in my grocery store the other day and they were selling plant-based chicken where the chicken normally is. Nobody was buying it either. This is all part of a master plan to try to get you to save the planet by forcing you to change your behavior through making it very expensive for you to live the way you have previously lived. Ironically for the Democrats, I think there's going to be a voter backlash. It's going to start in November, but I don't think it's going to stop in November. Um, I I think what is going to happen is voters will overwhelmingly vote Republican in November. But I think that will just be the beginning of it, because what I think you're going to see is Republicans, when they get the House and they get the Senate, when they get in the state level, they're going to begin uh, pushing regulations and pushing laws that would lower costs, would make things more efficient, would open supply chains and would increase oil supply in this country. And Joe Biden and the Democrats will use courts and lawsuits and veto pins and filibusters to block it. And that will expose that what they've been doing right now has all been part of the plan. And the Democrats will think, well, there will be a voter backlash to the Republicans, you know, January 6th and all that. I don't think there will be. I think the Democrats at this point are are way overplaying all the January 6th stuff. Um, I really do. Uh, And part of the problem as well is that there is so much out there right now pointing towards a recession and they're denying it. If the recession comes in the next uh, 12 to 18 months, that's going to be when Biden is running for reelection. And that's going to help the Republicans as well. Uh, Here is Heather uh, Bowsey, I think her name is. Uh, She's a top Biden White House economic advisor. Over the past week, we have heard that uh, a recession is not inevitable. (laughs) So why is it not inevitable? Well, because family balance sheets are strong, because we've been able to get the unemployment rate down, we're starting from a, a relatively strong position right now. So, um, and we, because we've, we've seen the economy able to weather some of these storms that have come over the past year, that gives us some confidence that um, should uh, oil prices continue to be high or maybe go up, which would be horrible, but um, you know, we think that, that there's enough of wiggle room that businesses and families will be able to, to make it through because they have resources to fall back on. Right, and here's uh, Karine Jean-Pierre, the White House Press Secretary. Right now, we don't see a recession right now. That is not, we're not in a recession right now. Uh, right now, we're in a transition where we, we, will, we are uh, going to go into a place of stable and steady growth, and that's going to be, uh, that's, that's going to be our focus. You know, we're going to be getting the, the numbers, uh, quarterly numbers, at, at some point. January, February, March, every May, June. Yeah, I mean, in, in, I mean, we'll find this out in a couple of weeks. We had uh, one quarter of negative economic growth. If you have two quarters of negative economic growth, you are definitionally in a recession. And there are a lot of CEOs think we already are. 
I actually don't know that we are in a recession, but I think one is coming. I think every time the Federal Reserve raises interest rates by a point, you get a recession. That's been the pattern over the last 20 years or so. Uh, For them to double down and say, we're not going to have one, we're not in one, we're not going to get one, I think makes it, uh, it destroys their credibility further. Very much like when they said, we're not going to have inflation, and if we have it, it's transitory. And now it's Vladimir Putin's fault. I don't think that's going to work with people. People kind of over time, listen, I think people are stupid. I say it all the time. People are stupid. But even stupid people have BS detectors, and and they're going off across America every time anyone from this White House speaks. And when they speak about the economy, people know we're in a world of hurt. You know, if you're in a world of hurt because of your retirement savings, if you're worrying about it uh, with the inflation, with the interest rate hikes, with gas prices and the like, uh, I think you might want to reach out to my friends at Goldco, particularly if you got $50,000 or more in your IRA Your 401k or other retirement savings, your your money could be at risk. You don't have a lot of options. You can protect your money with physical gold and silver, though. If you reach out to Gold Co. at 855-904-5933, you'll get a free wealth protection kit to learn how to use gold and silver to protect and grow your money. Thousands of retirees are protecting their retirement savings, and many are getting $10,000 or more in free silver for doing it. So call Gold Co., Find out how you qualify for their special offer. They've helped thousands of Americans manage their retirement, get it through inflation, stock market crashes, and the like. Instead of me giving you the toll-free number again because you're probably driving or in your office, just remember this. Text ERIC, E-R-I-C-K, to 33777. And I don't text and drive, folks, but text ERIC, E-R-I-C-K, to 33777. I'll send you Gold Coast toll-free number. Tell them I sent you. Just, if nothing else, get their wealth protection kit. It's completely free and learn how to use gold and silver in your retirement portfolio. This hour of the program brought to you by First Liberty Building and Loan. Listen, we know the financial headwinds are picking up steam, and if you've got a business and your business needs to grow and banks are starting to get skittish, reach out to my friends at First Liberty. They've been doing this since the early 90s, so through a lot of, lot of economic rot and upheavals and the like, they've been there helping businesses. We're talking big deals, though, $750,000 or more. If you're buying a building, building a building, you name it, reach out to them. FirstLibertyGA.com is their website. Tell them I sent you, FirstLibertyGA.com. I got to just note the stupidity of fact checkers. Y'all, um, there have been a series of stories in the Atlantic that have been just hagiographic stories of Joe Biden, Joe Biden the hero, Joe Biden the protagonist, Joe Biden, uh, whatnot. Um, it, it, and uh, I mean, one of them, leave Joe Biden alone. One of them is why Joe Biden should run for president again. He's the president we need. So someone in the spirit created um, an Atlanta, a photo. It looked like an article from the Atlantic, the heroism of Biden's bike fall. The president gracefully illustrated an important lesson for all Americans. When we fall, we must get back up. You will not be surprised to learn people fell for it. It was very good. It was on point. Of course, given what the Atlantic's been writing, people would fall for it. But the fact checkers had to go overboard. Reuters, the Associated Press, uh, Snopes, all of them, uh, they, they had to... They had to go overboard to make sure you knew, no, no, this this one's fake. This time, this time it's fake. You would never know it, though, because of so much of the hagiographic writing at the Atlantic about Joe Biden. And it should probably be a warning sign to them that they're, they're all fluffed up on this. This is... Um, These are headlines from The Atlantic. Leave Joe Biden alone. Biden's been a good president, but Republicans want to impeach him and some Democrats want to uh, replace him. In defense of naked Joe Biden, according to a new book, Joe Biden's Secret Service detail is leaking information about where the vice president is most vulnerable to being naked. 
Stay alive, Joe Biden. Joe Biden's campaign for president announced a hastily planned event in South Carolina. Um, I, 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 my goodness. Of course, people are liable to be fooled by the one given the others. Ah, my goodness gracious. All right. When we come back, I, is America ungovernable? More and more people are asking the question, is America, is the United States of America an ungovernable nation? I want to talk about that when we come back. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. ChumbaCasino.com has over 100 casino style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchases, over by law, 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.